breakfast. Medical examination. Neil Armstrong, Commander Apollo 11. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, not even collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. This is Houston, F2, 1160th second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Yeah, I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's the uh, surface is fine and battery. I can I can pick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere in fine layers, uh, like uh, powdered charcoal, to the uh, to the sole and sides of my boot. I only go in a uh, small fraction of inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I can see the footprints of my uh, boots and the treads and the fine sandy particles. Hey, yeah, this is Houston. We're copying. Uh, there seems to be no difficulty in moving around as, as we suspected. Uh, it's even perhaps easier than the simulations of 1-6-G that uh, we performed uh, in various simulations on the ground. Absolutely no trouble to uh, walk around. Okay, 
So the uh, if an engine did not leave a crater of any size, it uh, has about one foot clearance on the ground. We're uh, essentially on a very level place here. Uh, I can see uh, some evidence of, uh, of rays emanating from the descent engine, but uh, very insignificant amount. For those who haven't uh, read the plaque, uh, we'll read the plaque that's on the front landing gear of this lamb. There's, there's two hemispheres, one showing each of the two hemispheres of Earth. Underneath it says, Dear men from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, AD. We came in peace for all mankind. It has the, the crew members' signatures and the signature of the President of the United States. Yeah, radio loud clear. How's it going? Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. Uh, I believe they're setting up the flag now. Great. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's alright, I don't mind a bit. How is the quality of the TV? Oh, it's beautiful, Mike. It really is. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. Beautiful, just beautiful.
Ladies and gentlemen, the first person to land a spacecraft upon the moon and the first person to set foot upon its surface, Mr. Neil Armstrong. so much. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Reed, Mr. McConnell, Ms. Pelosi, members, distinguished guests. We gather in this remarkable monument to American history, this room connecting the houses of Congress, this room where ideological differences fade in the presence of the overpowering force of pride in what we do and what Americans have achieved. It's a privilege to be in this rotunda. High above us, just below the windows, stretches a frieze with 19 panels depicting important events in American history. The most recent of them, number 19, just above me here, depicts the first successful flight of a man in a powered aircraft. by the Brothers Wright 108 years ago. The depiction, in addition to the craft and the responsible individuals, includes an American bald eagle carrying an olive branch. Wilbur and Orville Wright were the 45th recipients of the Congressional Gold Medal and the first for achievements in the world of flight. Subsequently, Congressional Gold Medals have been presented nine times for aviation and rocketry achievements. Today, for the first time, they are being given for achievements in spaceflight. In an appropriate coincidence, Apollo 11's mission emblem and crew patch also featured an American bald eagle carrying an olive branch. The Apollo 11 crew is honored to receive the Congressional Gold Medal and accept on behalf of our fellow Apollo teammates, all those who played a role in expanding the human presence outward from Earth and all those who played a role in expanding human knowledge of the solar system and beyond. We thank the Congress very much. Watch now as the X-15 is launched from the B-52. There's the drop. Before it returns to Earth again, the X-15 may fly some 60 miles straight up at nearly 4,000 miles per hour, more than twice the speed of a bullet. The pilot will be subjected to G-forces and weightlessness, experiences familiar to astronauts. The X-15 is the only craft in the world capable of pilot-controlled flight both in atmosphere and space. 
Its more than 120 missions have increased our knowledge of pilot performance and flight safety and provided problem answers in developing supersonic aircraft. The experimental X-15 research being done today will play an important part in our air and space travel of the future.